Welcome back everyone to today's Destiny 2 build session that will be focusing on the brand new and must have exotic named Star Eater Scales. These odd looking exotics don't seem that interesting at first glance, but once this exotic perk kicks in, you can deal out some pretty hefty borderline OP damage that hunters have probably never seen before. The exotic doesn't require a lot but the basics, and from this you can chuck this onto any subclass of your choice, and the damage will be there. And to get the most out of it, you will need to build into your super as a whole, which should be pretty easy to do since the exotic will help you along the way. I've seen a lot of hype around these new exotic and the create combos that can be paired with them, and I have found one build that offers the most to use in one giant go. To give you an idea, you can debuff any enemies for 30% and then gain a 60% damage buff, I can then gain half your super back and reduce the needed time to activate said super over and over again while also gaining a overshield and use a weapon that not many people would expect. It honestly works a charm and I can see it working in the majority of endgame content with underground enemies. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then do leave a like and a sub for more content like this in the future, I would really appreciate it. Starting with the subclass, we will be using Way of the Trapper for simply its invisibility and deadfall perk that will come in handy for pre-laying out traps for those who walk by it, but this subclass isn't the only choice you have to play with, please do remember that. Now when it comes down to creating the build, I had two choices in mind of how to create the build. I could build around bottom tree and make it rely on team support to get the most out of it, or I could focus on top tree and go with a simple solo build and nothing more. As I will be playing in groups, bottom tree seems the most best choice to pick considering the rewards you get back from supporting your own team. But on the other hand, Way of the Trapper offers me less focus on team support and more focus on personal survival and DPS via weapon usage, something that I believe suits the playstyle I am aiming for. Having invisibility available for me from dodging and a long lasting super paired with a strong weapon and exotic boots that keeps buffing you can make you very powerful for closing the gap and destroying bosses while they stay immobile. As you can already tell from the gameplay, the point of the build isn't crowd control, but melting through tough enemies in a short amount of time, with or without my teammates. There is less thinking involved with doing this build, which is great for those that just want to be in and out of danger. Now to be honest, you don't need to solely rely on Way of the Trapper to achieve the same thing I am doing. Way of the Pathfinder offers pretty much the same thing, but with all around booster stats if you use your abilities around teammates. You also have these super uses as well, where Trapper offers a one time single use, while Pathfinder offers multiple. This is fine to use, and I highly recommend you use both as thanks to the Star Eater's flexibility, you aren't tied down into a specific subclass. This makes builds like this a lot better to use in content with little downsides involved. Plus, with the amount of supers I'll be getting with Energy Converter mod and how my super can last a lot longer than Pathfinder, I can nestle a wide area of my super and use it to slow down the movement of everyone in the field. This can be quite good if you decide to play raids or dungeons and need to gather more ammo before doing anything else. For weaponry, I chose to focus on a setup that allowed me to dump a huge amount of damage against an enemy within a few seconds and then have said gear auto reload. This is a method that you may have seen by raid players when they want to quickly burn through bosses in terms of DPS phases. For example, my primary is the Whispering Slab bow with Sympathetic Arsenal, Swashbuckler and Quick Draw, and the point of the weapon roll I have is for it to support my secondary and take out the long reload times involved. With the Sympathetic Arsenal perk, each kill made will reload my weapon, but only my secondary sadly. When creating the build, I thought that if I'm going to debuff a boss and also gain a 60% weapon buff from the Star Eater as well, then I will need to find a weapon that can make full use of this damage buff in a short amount of time. From this came the 4th Horseman which is quick, bulky and can do quite a bit of damage in a short time frame. One issue with using the weapon though is that it's incredibly slow reload speed, which can be fixed if you build up its catalyst, but for those who don't have the time nor the sanity to do so, then the alternative version is a lot more better to go ahead and do. What this means is that I can go ahead to a boss, dump a round into them, reload by killing an enemy, and then get a full stack back again and repeat as many times as I like. And on top of that, if you have your bow mass work then you're also speeding up your super regen and stacks along the setup. For secondary I'm using the 4th Horseman shotgun, 
and this was a personal favourite of mine back in D1 with Arkburn being available in Nightfalls. Now not so much as things have changed but with the setup I created, I believe we may have found that new love once again. Like I mentioned earlier, the point of the build is to dump a ton of DPS into a boss quickly and either wipe them out or do enough damage that your teammates can then take over from there. The shotgun can offer some incredibly fast DPS against enemies, but the only issue you're going to have is reloading that can hamper on this area majorly. With this sympathetic arsenal perk, we can negate the reload issue in part and can also rely on our dodge to safely auto reload and provide some cover. This has been working out really well and making the setup practically usable for everyone involved as that massive weapon buff you get and the debuff being applied to bosses can allow you to take a good chunk or one third of enemy's health in two or even one full round. For heavy I've chosen to use Deep Avengers memory with spike grenades, clown cartridge and autoload and holster. Once again the heavy slot can be switched to pretty much anything you feel is more impactful and I did play around to see what best suited the build playstyle. Using a rocket launcher with lasting impressions for example is great for extra damage to be applied, but very risky if you plan to use your shotgun straight after with its delayed destination. Swords can also work and I have found can be incredibly useful if you know how to stop a boss stomp from sending you flying, and with the right perks, you can add on to the 60% weapon buff you gain and gain an even larger advantage from there on out. Overall I stuck with a grenade launcher for the quick damage you can offer in a short amount of time and the fact that I can use this at mid to long ranges and still get a decent amount of damage in while at a safe length. To be fair, swords would be better for the ammo reserves and quick burst damage, but this will all depend on where you decide to use the build and generally what against. For stats, your main focus will be your discipline for a faster cooldown and combination use with the NG converter mod and your intellect for of course a faster cooldown your super. It's a pretty straightforward setup that you're going to be aiming for, since everything here is waiting for the star eater to be active before anything else, so you don't need to have high stats in the key recommended areas as I mentioned. Since our super is key to making the build work and our weapons will follow up after it, my first priority is to get my intellect up as high as possible. For this I've gone for a natural 60 cooldown and using the NG converter mod to build up the first half of my super bar, the moment I build up my stacks and throw my grenade. I've gone over this method as naturally I will be gathering orbs of power as I go, which I need to feed into my exotic for the major buff I receive in the end. So the idea of using a mod that can help me reach my goal quickly is the best thing I could possibly think of. If for example I'm already at full super, I can still use my grenades and not lose stacks in the process, unless I die for example. This is handy as I can go ahead and use my super and then use my grenades again to gain a 10-50% to super build up straight after and then continue where I left off. We basically cut the middleman of waiting for a super to get up quickly and instead just head straight in for quicker benefits. This then leads into our discipline stat at 70 which we'll be using a lot with the combination of energy converter. As we don't have any other mods that will provide an extra boost to the stat, it's important that we have our grenades fully ready to use for the maximum amount of DPS that can be pulled in. On top of that, we do also have the Ashes to Ashes mod that will provide super energy upon grenade kills, which will also greatly benefit us from start to finish. So if you have the stat points, it is recommended you highly build into this area as high as it can possibly go. Lastly, we do have the mobility stat, which I've only left at 40. Though I'll be using my dodge quite a bit, I don't have the slots nor stats available to allow me to push it up further to gain even more benefits from it. If you manage to balance your stats out, I would recommend you provide some extra support in this area as well, as it will greatly benefit you. Now with the main bases covered, let's take a look at the mods we are using and how they play within the build. For head we have discipline, ashes to assets and charged up mod. Arm we have discipline, fastball and elemental ordnance mod. Chest we have discipline, concussive dampener times 2 and supercharged up mod. Leg we have Discipline, Insulation times 2 and NG Converter mod. Cloak we have Minor Resilience, Special Finisher, Unstoppable Schweizscheider Condenser and Charge with Light mod. As you can see from the mods, stats and weapons used, everything will be leading back into the Super and then back into the Star Eater for a big boost once in action. The Star Eaters offers the user the ability to overcharge your Super up to max 4 and from this you then gain a few following benefits. Your super does increase damage, you gain a burst of healing, and you gain an overshield but only on max stacks. 
With this information, it should tell you straight away what you should be aiming for before diving straight in and what path you need to take onwards. So here's how the build goes. We have our subclass of either top tree or bottom tree void in the background. We'll go ahead and get some kills to produce some orbs of power as we go to quickly build up our super. At the same time, the orbs of power produced will stack up to times 5 for the energy converter mod and will stay there until I use my super fully up. Once my super is at full and my stacks for Feast of Lights and Charge of Lights are as well, we will then move on to the damage phase. How this part is initiated is down to the user but starting off with the 4th Horseman is the best way to go forward. Now once we use our super on the boss or ultra, they will gain a 30% debuff while we gain a 60% buff when at max stacks. And this will prolong until the enemy moves away from the super to escape. In this moment, we will then inflict damage onto the boss with our first round on the shotgun. Reload it via my bow or by dodging to go invisible. Whichever one is present. Then once back up the fall, we will then do a second volley with a shotgun and then switch to our sword or grenade launcher to finish up the rest. When done correctly, we should have been able to take out at least one third to a half or even to a full of a boss health, either on our own or with a team. Now do remember that this will vary from enemy to enemy as most can be obliterated in one full round, while others can be more tanky than normal, especially if their weak spot isn't present. To also make sure our shotgun doesn't run out of ammo, we do have the special ammo finisher mod, which I highly recommend you also attach, as you will burn through ammo like there's no tomorrow. This will mean you need to sacrifice the bomber or distribution mod as well, which are always wanted for any builds in mind, but this is needed if you want to succeed. Now where this build shines the most will vary as it's mainly designed for dumping a full load of DPS on the bosses or enemies alike. Ideally strikes, battlegrounds, gambit, dungeons and the new seasonal activity is where it will be best place to use it in. It can be used in raids but your weapon may need to change depending on what you are up against and how well you are able to control the build in general. Not a lot of people want to see someone play the raid or nightfall ordeals with an exotic shotgun such as this as it eats through ammo way too quickly and is also too risky to use in most encounters. But the 4th horseman with his fast DPS can shred through enemies in a matter of seconds and even without the super in use, all champions can be easily defeated by just your weapon alone as long as you manage to get a stun on them. The success of the build relies on making sure you have everything charged up before heading into engagement. As long as you do that, then you'll have a great time playing around with the build and cause a ton of chaos in the meantime. So if you enjoyed the video then please do leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Time for 2 lore content. If you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.